Well, thank you very much, Ken Workington. Welcome, everybody, to a Friday night at the Meadowlands. And yes, indeed, the man sitting to my left is trainer Chris Ryder, one of a lengthy list of down-under guys who have dominated racing here in North America since coming over here. What first brought you to North America, and when did you come over? Uh, I believe it was 1989, going back a little bit. Uh, my wife had a transfer with her job, and um, we, you know, we're obviously both being New Zealanders, but we didn't have any family, so uh, we were eager to come. Now, were you training horses at the time, or were you a bloodstock agent, or what were you I, doing? I was bloodstock agent. Um, I used to train one or two just to fill in a bit of time, but uh, I was a bloodstock agent. Well, I got news for you. You actually came over before that because you trained the yeah. 1997 two-year-old pacing cold of the oh, year, yeah, okay, sealed and me. delivered. And, and he was like the horse that really jump-started your career, wasn't he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yes. He was the two-year-old of the year that year. And uh, forgive my dates on my era on dates there. But yeah, he was, uh, he was a, a beautiful, beautiful horse. And he, was, he did jump-start my career. And, you know, he's one of those good horses that you really never forget. Well, one thing, Chris, that you have done that John Campbell has never done, Mike LaChance has never done, the White Knight has never done, you'll take a turn in the sulky once in a while. You have won a turf race here at the Meadowlands. That was last summer with your very own horse, Oneidan Legacy. Let's take a look at the roll into that right now. And I don't bet much, and I could kick myself here, because you entered this horse every turf race we had, and later on we found out that both you and him have raced on the grass before down under. Yes, correct. He... Um I just felt it was, you know, I was on the turf and, you know, having done it before at home, I thought it was a really good publicity idea for the Midlands, you know, mix things up a little bit. Uh, and I was really eager to, to be in it. Uh, you know, I can't say I expected to win it, but I was really eager to be in it because I thought it was a good promotion. Um, and all the feedback I've had from talking to people, people who really seem to enjoy that race. Well, I talked to Dave Miller about it. I said, what was it like? He said it was so weird because you didn't hear any hoofbeats out no. there on the turf. It was no. really, really quiet. Yeah. A lot of the horses didn't handle it. Did you change your shoeing at all on Oneidan Legacy? No, I didn't, but uh, Oneidan Legacy was a horse that wore four aluminum level grips, which are shoes that have a lot of grip. And if he had been racing in steel, I would have put the four aluminums on to go on the grass. And that's what he did racing on the grass, which is better on the grass because it just gives more grip. But the change I did make on him, I, after warming him up on the grass, uh, I realized how rough the track was. And I took his hobbles up four or five holes. And uh, subsequently, there were three breakers in that race. And uh, you know, the, the one problem with the track, it was a little rough uh, for whatever reason. Um, and we'd had rain for a few weeks beforehand, and that race had been canceled twice. So the grass was actually too long, and the ground was soft as well, so it slowed them down. Well, they uh, went right the speed they needed to go for you because yes. you got the job done at a nice mutual. And again, I missed the boat on that one, that's for sure. Well, tonight marks the uh, 2010 debut of Put On A Show, one of the top two-year-old pacing fillies last year that you trained. First crop of rock and roll Hanover, won seven of nine. I think she won her first seven starts, runner-up in the Dan Patch voting. Let's take a look at her winning a bluegrass division at Lexington. Jody Jamison was in the sulky on this day. And Put On A Show looked very good, but she also tended to drift in through the stretch drive. Now, Jody will get her straightened up and then she'll drift in again. Is that kind of a habit that she had last year, Chris? Yes, yes, it is. She hasn't done it in all her races and she has not done it in her first two qualifiers this year. Uh, but it's something that I'm guarded against equipment-wise with her and we're ready for it. Um, it's something you know, she's done a few times and uh, it's just something we have to work on. Now, one of her greatest races last year was a race she didn't win, and that was the Breeders' Crown. You were facing Fancy Philly. Fancy Philly drew inside. You drew post eight. Jody Jamison had to leave for position, and then I think you followed Fancy Philly's brush to the lead on the backstretch. Let's pick up the action on the far turn. You are in front, and we're about uh, three-eighths of a mile out. What were you thinking as you watched this race after what had unfolded earlier? I knew she'd made two moves already to make the lead, and it's something she had never done before. And obviously I knew that uh, Fancy Philly was the horse to beat and she was following us. Um, you know, honestly, at the head of the stretch, when she got, a, a, uh, got away from Fancy Philly a little bit, uh, I got a little confident. I thought she would hold on. And, uh, you know, right now you can see that, you know, the, the wire's too far away for her to hold on. And, and uh, you know, she raced a gallant race. I actually, I think she had the nine hole. You said the eight. I'm, I'm really not sure about that. Um, 
you know, and uh, that was a headwind that night. The front end was no good. But, um, you know, she got beat, but she still won a tremendous race. Now, do you think if the post would have been reversed that the outcome would have been different? I know it's horse yeah. racing, but you like yeah. to speculate anyhow. Well, we're going to say yes. You know, we really don't know, and you've got to give credit to the winner. Fancy Philly's a great filly. She's got a tremendous record, and uh, that's the way it came out. And, you know, we're not going to complain. We'll live with it. Well, you've got quite a few nice fillies, and uh, one of those that we saw last year is also in tonight. That's Lover of Art, a very talented lass who was good early. Let's take a look at her winning a debutante division, and this was a hell of a drive by your man Tim Tietrich here yeah, to uh, sure. snake through traffic, but Lover of Art always had a very good closing kick on the end. What happened to her last summer? Was she just so good early you shut her down, or what was the story? She went to Canada for the She's a Great Lady, and got up there and got, we raced her once, she, she raced a little flat and she was full of allergies, which happens in Canada. Um, so we just stopped with her for the year. So that was really, it was all that was wrong with her.